Well, it looks like I'm going to bombard you guys with a video every day now again. Hopefully it's not too much, but this is my uh, grandfather's stroke tuner out of the case. The case is right there. You've probably seen these before on stage. That's all they had in the 60s. But uh, this is actually the ST4, and all I could find was a print for the ST6. But I'm going to attempt to service it. It's calibration. This is calibrate down, operate up, every letter. D, D sharp, E, I mean, every note in the scale, on off, and this is gain, to give you a little bit of, well, to adjust the signal so you get a good reading on the wheel. This spins real fast. And it's just been kind of dull. I don't use it anymore because it doesn't seem to be getting a very good signal. So I thought I would try to clean it up. I've already cleaned this tube up. I've got this one in the tube tester. This one back here that's not there right now, that one seems to be bad, which might be some of my weak signal. I'm not sure, but that's what I was going to try to do, is do some maintenance mm -hmm. and uh, show you guys that you know, this tube stuff is pretty fascinating and a lot of fun. It definitely, it's like working on old cars. I mean, nowadays you can't work on cars because they're all computerized and you have to have special machines. But these are like the old, the old cars where you change the spark plugs and the alternator and the distributor and all that stuff that we used to do back in the old days. Um... Looks a lot like some of my old amps. You know, it's got some blue moldeds, transformer, transformer, the old brown capacitor, which actually they don't look too bad, but I mean, those should be changed too. And I might do that. 50 microfarads. I might go ahead and change some of them, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to. Try to clean the light bulb, do simple stuff. Check the tubes, maybe buy a couple of tubes on eBay. And see if I can get it to work a little better. Still got to check these tubes. But right now, I wanted to show you the tube tester. It's pretty cool. If you're going to work on tube equipment or amps, anything, it's almost a must to have one of these tube testers but uh, this is a Hickok which is one of the best ones that they make this is uh, the FAA version I, don't know, I think they had a lot of tube equipment that they had to check all the time sorry about this tripod thing and I couldn't have lived without it. I bought so many junk tubes on eBay. This is the culprit that I think might be just bad. Finally, it works, but it's weak. Fifty-eight seventy-nine. An old realistic lifetime. This lifetime's over, I think. This in here, which I used a roll chart to find the settings. Is a 6AQ5. All these tubes in this tuner I have never tested before on this thing. So all I did have to do right now is push the S5 button, which is the middle. It's a usual conductance or whatever. Yeah. Here we go. It has to go over 575. Oh boy, it goes to a thousand. So that tube's good. See what this roll chart does. It has almost every tube you could ever imagine back in when they had tubes and everything. I've got sockets. You can see this socket for this little tube. This socket for 
that are standard 12AX and 12AYs and a 12AUs, which is what this is. And uh, half these sockets, I don't even know what they're for. These are just pin straighteners over here for each for two sizes. But I have never used these, that one, that. Has a life test too, which on power tubes is great. You can see if they're worn out or not. But I just wanted to show you. Let's say, let's say it's a six eight Q five, which is what this. It'll tell you a setting on here. Selectors forty three ten fifty six twenty. So you just go forty three. It was already on there. Ten fifty. Let's just say fifty six twenty. Then you put this on tube test, it'll tell you the multiplier, which is this knob, it's at times 4. The bias is this knob, you want it at 18. Shunt, you won't be using on this tube. Like I said, you just plug it in. And they used to have these things in the grocery stores and stuff. I remember when our TV would start flipping horizontally which was a nightmare with all those old TVs. It's a there, and you sit there and play with the knob trying to get it to stop. Then you go down and check all your tubes at the grocery store, and they had tubes right there. You buy them, test your test the ones that you thought were bad, which TVs were fairly complicated. I don't think we ever fixed it that way. Maybe once or twice, but usually you had a TV repairman come out. I don't know if you guys remember those guys, but they would come out with their little tool kit, open up your TV and fix it. It's pretty cool. All right, so, and it just tells you the minimum is 575. We already did this and it went to a thousand. So it's a good tube. So, uh, these things aren't that awfully expensive. I mean, I think I paid $325 for that thing. Uh, but you do take your chances when you buy those, uh, which I bought on eBay. You don't know if you're really going to get one that's in decent shape or not. Luckily, I think I have, but I should have probably had it checked out and never have. So I'm not absolutely positive that I'm getting accurate readings. But it seems to have been working all this time fairly well. Tube goes in there like that. Clean all the tubes. Got to have. This is something you have to have. Don't go, don't leave home without it. Deoxid. I get the D100. This is okay in your vintage pots and everything. They have a D5, which is just 5%. This is 100% deoxid. I clean everything electrical with this. Stuff's a miracle. Gotta have that. Put it in, clean all your sockets with it. I'm tempted to spray it on my little wheel here because this thing's rattling. I can see there's a rubber grommet in there that's semi rotted and uh, right up against the body here. This thing kind of chatters. Either way, we're going to try to get this thing to where it has a better signal and I can tune things easily. Talk to you later.